church. Let's uh, enter his gates with thanksgiving this morning, offering our worship to the God who gave us everything. We've been learning this song the last few weeks. God, we give you our gratitude today. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I all my gratitude And I could sing these songs As I often do But every song must end And you never do So I throw up my hands Praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah
we throw up our hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a heart say thank you Jesus thank you for all you've done thank you for the gift of this moment God we're so grateful give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given. Jesus Christ, his son, and now let the weak say, I am strong, let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done. this with me. It's going to be on the screens from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. 
and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Let's bring joy into the house of God today, friends. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. Cause he opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Come on now. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place We won't be quiet But we shout out your praise As we sing to the God who heals We sing to the God who saves we sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. But my God is still throwing stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. But we shout out your praise. There's joy. And now we're royalty And we were the prisoners And now we're running free We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace And let the house of the Lord sing praise We were the beggars, we were the beggars And now we're royalty We were the prisoners to the folks around you, then you may be seated. 
Well, good morning. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord with you today, whether you're right here in this room or if you're out on the patio or joining us online. We're so glad that you're with us today. My name is Christian. My name is Alex, Pastor Walk in Español. Good morning. Buenos dias, everybody. Usually you're in the translation booth, right? Yes, usually. Yeah. And today, That's my spot. <laughs> today we get the pleasure of having Alex here with us. But we are so glad that you're here. If you're new, if today is your first time with us, we have a gift for you. And so if you're here on campus, you can stop by Guest Central in the lobby. Love to answer any questions that you have. And if you're online, we have a gift for you as well. So the chat hosts are going to put a link in the comments and you can click on that and we'll send you your gift. So we would like to let you know Night to Shine is coming up February 11th from 5 to 8. Night to Shine is a wonderful opportunity to come and serve those uh, adults with specialized needs. It's a prom-like celebration, and uh, we're looking for those who would like to attend, also those who would like to volunteer. So please, put it on your schedule, go online and sign up. It ha we have like a big red carpet, lots of pictures. So if you haven't served with us before for Night to Shine, you don't want to miss it. It's a really fun night. Yeah, it is fun. Well, one of the things that we have starting this week are our grow groups. We are launching into our grow group season, so we want to keep those groups in prayer. We have community groups that are starting. We have our alpha groups starting, and then we have our rooted groups that are starting to meet as well. We know that God is going to continue to build community, and we know people are going to be growing in their faith. So keep those groups in prayer. And if you're not able to get to campus to be in a group, maybe you watch online, you're joining us from far away, or maybe Maybe you just can't make it here during the week. You can join our online rooted group if that's something you're interested in. We have an online rooted group that'll be meeting, and you can find out more about that on WAC.net. And some great news about rooted. Are you guys ready? Yes, For ready. the first time, we're gonna have rooted in Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Let's please give let's give a hand to the Lord. Yes, we're so excited. There's so many people that have been asking. Hey, when can we have Rooted in Spanish? And now it's here, all right? So please sign up. There's a group uh, out there uh, taking registrations. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to experience. So I encourage everybody to uh, come and do that. Also, we are announcing today is our uh, Wacking Español Volunteer Lunch. So we have been praying for people to come and serve. And we know the Lord has great plans for what he's doing in our Spanish community. And uh, so today, if you're interested in serving, we're going to have a lunch in the upper patio right after the 11 o'clock service or 1230, somewhere around there. And our leaders are going to come and share the different opportunities where you can come and be part of the wonderful work the Lord is doing in that community. And Spanish is not required, so please join us. And maybe you feel called to serve in WAC in Espanol, and maybe you feel called to serve in another capacity here at WAC. We are hiring right now. We have staff vacancies, and we are praying for the individuals who will fill those roles. We're praying that God would prepare hearts and move the right people to apply. So if you're interested, we do have positions related to our WAC in Espanol yep. worship gathering. That's right. <laughs> so we're looking for a worship leader, also a production assistant, and then we have other positions positions open as well. We have a women's ministry director position that's open and um, an administrative assistant position for our women's ministry. So if you're interested in seeing some of the ways that you can step into a, a position here at WAC, all of the information, the list is on WAC.net slash employment. Yeah, and as we are calling on for volunteers and even staff to join us, we know there's many of you who make WAC their home. And you are all here at WAC. So we want to invite you to our membership class. It's coming up February 6th from 11 to 12. It's a great class for you to come and learn all the different things that we have here at WAC. How you can become a member. And, you know, learn additionally all of how we can serve, how we can be more effective to the kingdom. So please, February 6th, next week, put it on your calendar. Hope to see you there. God continues to work in amazing ways here at WAC. And right now we're going to be going into a time of giving our tithes and offering, giving our gifts to God. We know that he has given us so much. We respond generously out of all that he's given. We're going to be praying for our offering. Also, I invite you to pray for our junior hires today. They're on their way home from camp. They were at camp this weekend. And so we want to keep them in prayer for safe travels and also that God would continue the work in 
their hearts that he started over the weekend that it would be lasting going beyond the mountain when they come home. So we'll keep them in prayer as well. So would you join me as we pray? God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you, God, that we get to partner with you in the work that you're doing in this world. Lord, we pray that we would be your hands and feet. We pray, God, that you would bless the gifts that we're about to give. And Lord, I pray also for our junior hires. I pray, God, that you would keep them safe as they travel home. We pray, God, that you would continue the work that you started um, over this weekend that you've been doing in their lives even before this weekend. We pray that it would continue as they continue to draw close to you and build community with each other. God, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.
sing this out. biggest Ram fan you've ever met. <laughs> I know it's, and I, by the way, and I, I know some uh, hard loving 49er fans are here today. Matt, you're here today. I see some other 49er stuff around. I see my friends over here with their Ram jerseys on. And so knowing that this day was coming today, if, if you don't know, the Rams and the 49ers are playing in the NFC Championship today at 3 p.m. And we've got such a talented team here at WAC. So I thought to myself, well, I'm going to let somebody else lead worship today. And I'm going to make sure that I don't have to do announcements or anything like that. And I'll come to church in the morning. And then I'll see if I can just maybe not come to the 5 p.m. And I'll watch the Ram game with my family this afternoon. That was, that was my plan. And last night, John Riley called me. Said he's not feeling well, and it, would I mind preaching his sermon? And I said, sure. <laughs> and then this morning at 6 a.m., I get a text message from Matt, who was supposed to lead the singing this morning, not that Matt, the big bearded Matt, uh, saying he's not feeling well, and would I mind singing for him today? <laughs> and so I had plans, and God had other plans. And I'm humbled and grateful to be in his service today. This is John Riley's sermon, okay? I am presenting John Riley's talk. And so next week, or when you see John next, make sure to tell him you thought his sermon was really good last Sunday. <laughs> and the delivery was a little sketchy, but the sermon was great. We're in a series right now called Rooted, and today we're going to talk about being rooted in rest. Who needs rest? One of the greatest threats to your physical and spiritual well-being in 2022 is a lack of rest. A lack of rest can be a dangerous thing. Some of the most infamous industrial accidents from the past 100 years have been in the middle of the night and have involved workers who did not have enough rest. That was the case at the Three Mile Island nuclear plant accident in 1979. The same was true at the Chernobyl nuclear plant catastrophe and the Exxon Valdez oil spill in 1989. So many other tragic accidents in our world have had one of the contributing factors being sleep-deprived, rest-needy workers. Some of you know that the Space Shuttle Challenger explosion was caused by a faulty, uh, faulty rubber O-rings that grew bitter, bitter in the cold. Most of you know that the NASA officials and their consultants who made the call to proceed with launch decided that after going 20 straight hours without sleeping. Neglecting your need for rest and renewal can have dangerous consequences, not just for your physical health, but your spiritual health too. You begin to enter a vicious cycle of fatigue that blinds you from being attentive to God, attentive to other people, to the right thing you should do, 
Author Ruth Haley Barton explains it like this. When we keep pushing forward without taking adequate time for rest and replenishment, our way of life may seem heroic, but there is a frenetic quality to our work that lacks true effectiveness because we have lost the ability to be present to God, to be present to other people, and to discern what is really needed in our situation. And this can lead to burnout, joylessness, spiritual, spiritually calloused lives where you and I make unwise decisions out of desperation, all the while idolizing exhaustion. Barbara Brown Taylor writes, some of us have made an idol of exhaustion. The only time we know we have done enough is when we're running on empty. And when the ones we love most are the ones we see the least, when we lie down to sleep at night, we offer our full appointment calendars to God in lieu of prayer, believing that God, who is as busy as we are, will surely understand. Pastor Gordon McDonald once famously said, I'm of the opinion that busyness is a deeper threat to the soul than pornography ever was. Whoa. As we move forward in the year ahead, the pace and patterns and problems of life are going to wear us out. So we need a solution. We need to discover how we can root our lives in rest and renewal. And not just rest for your body, but also rest for your soul. And I believe the answer is found all over the pages of Scripture. But the passage of Scripture we're going to look at today is Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5. Chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. If you've got your Bible, welcome to join me there. If you want to look it up on your phone so you can see that I'm telling the truth, you can do that as well. Verse 12, it says, Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work. Neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your ox, your donkey, any of your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns, so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. In this ancient passage given to the people of Israel, we can discover a key practice or how you can root your life in rest and renewal in 2022. And that key practice is to observe the Sabbath, or as we'll talk about today, to say yes to Sabbath. And I want to help you prepare to do this by answering these three questions. What does the Sabbath mean? Second, why was the Sabbath given in the first place? And third, how can you say yes to the Sabbath today? We'll look at the, the what, the why, and the how of the Sabbath. So let's begin with the what. What does the command to Sabbath even mean? The word Sabbath sounds like a deeply religious word. Uh, in Hebrew, the word is Shabbat. It sounds even more sacred. But literally, Shabbat is, is just the simple word stop to cease, to take a break. And although the Shabbat was part of the Ten Commandments, God began trying to teach the people of Israel. As soon as they left Egypt, even before the Israelites stood before Sinai, waiting for Moses to emerge with the stone tablets, God had been forming Sabbath in them through the provision of manna. God told the people through Moses in Exodus 16, six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. Every seventh day, they were to stop gathering and working and simply to rest. Rest is core to what Sabbath is. And sadly, as you know, stopping and resting may be one of the most countercultural decisions many of us can make in a culture that idolizes work. In 2009, the Harvard Business Review said 70-hour work weeks are the new standard for professionals. Many of you know, and you're feeling that right now. 
And even though many people have done more work from home in the past year, past two years, sometimes we found it's hard to turn off our minds because there's not clear boundaries of when work starts and where work stops. Well, Sabbath gives us that clear boundary. And such a boundary requires trust. Mark Buchanan writes, Sabbath is turning over to God all those things, our money, our work, our status, our reputations, our plans, our projects, that we're otherwise tempted to hold tight in our own closed fists, to hold on to dear life for. Uh, let's see, I lost my place. I apologize. Uh, yes, sorry, I'm back. to take those things and surrender to him. Sabbath is stopping. Not because everything is finished, but because in the words of Wayne Muller, we refuse to rest until we're finished. We will never rest until we die. So Sabbath requires trusting God that he can handle the weight of the universe on his shoulders so we can put it down one day each week, which makes the Sabbath an act of love. Diana Ross, and the Supremes began singing a song that the world has not stopped singing since. It goes like this. We got it? No, Joe, we don't have it? No audio? You guys ready? Oh, there it is. Okay, that was short. This is going really well, I think. How, what do you think? This is going really well. All right, that's the heart of the Sabbath. God invites us to stop and rest, not in the name of religion, but in the name of love. love. Thanks for the help, I appreciate it. And this gift of love is not just for certain people in our society. Notice, this practice, when it was given to Israel, it was intended to be a gift for everyone to stop. Look again at Deuteronomy 5. Sabbath is for you. It's for your son or your daughter. It's for your workers and your ox and your donkey and any of your animals. It's for my dog Chewbacca and your neighbors who come from other countries. Everyone needs and deserves to stop in the name of love and rest. Eugene Peterson writes, Sabbath is uncluttered time and space to distance ourselves from the frenzy of our own activities so we can see what God was and is doing. If we don't regularly quit working one day a week, we take ourselves far too seriously. The moral sweat pouring off our brows blinds us to the primal action of God in us and around us. So what is Sabbath? Sabbath is a day of rest. But secondly, scriptures teach that Sabbath is a day for reverence, a day to worship. We're here, we're worshiping, it's Sunday, it's our Sabbath today. The first time that the word holy or kodash in Hebrew appears in the Bible, that's right, is when Sabbath appears. Genesis 2, it says, by the seventh day, God had finished all the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. Next slide. Then God blessed the seventh day and he made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating all that he had done. And each of us is commanded to keep it holy, to observe the rest. To observe is the Hebrew word shamar. It can, be, it can mean to observe or it can mean to, to guard or to dig, diligently keep the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week. Because as Moses, Moses explains to the people of Israel in Exodus, he says, the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and has made it holy. And so God made the Sabbath holy, but you have to keep it holy. What does it mean to keep a day holy? It means that you live this day differently than any other day. You think of it as something special, something unique, maybe like an anniversary. If you have a special anniversary with someone you love, it's not enough just to come home and say, hey, I remembered that today was our anniversary. That's good. No, you, you, plan a special, you, you plan a special meal together. You, you often, maybe you have a gift that you prepare for that special someone. Um, in the same way, Sabbath is to be approached with special care and intentionality. To keep something holy, as scripture defines it, also means to dedicate something for worship. Le Leviticus 23 calls the Sabbath a day of sacred assembly. 
meaning it was a time for God's people to worship together. The Jewish theologian Abraham Heschel declared that for the Jews, the Sabbaths are our great cathedrals that neither the Romans nor the Germans were able to burn. The Sabbath becomes a temple in time. I love that. No matter what challenges you, no, more, no matter what challenges in life you may face, theologian Walter Brueggemann writes, people who keep Sabbath live all seven days differently. Go ahead. See, you need Sabbath rest to live in the rhythm of the universe. In Deuteronomy 5, though, there's another reason given for, for why God gave the Sabbath day. It's so you remember that you are not a slave to work. After Moses is finished giving the Sabbath commandment, he says, remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. The people of Israel were held captives as slaves in the land of Egypt for 400 years, century after century, Israel labored as slaves with no vacations, no weekends, no rest. And so when God delivered them from bondage in Egypt, he extended them the grace of a day each week to rest and to enjoy their freedom. In this way, Sabbath is a God-designed way to recognize the human dignity with which God has made us. Remember, you are not a slave to your work. Humans are more than tools or machines to produce things. And, and Sabbath serves as a reminder and protection from reducing people to become pieces or parts of some production process. Matthew Sleeth says, Sabbath is a time to transition from human doings to human beings. Which leads to the final question, how can you say yes to the Sabbath in 2022. Now, before we answer that question, I want to pause and recognize that some of you might not like that question very much because you might be thinking, nowhere does the New Testament command anyone to observe the Sabbath. So before we answer the question of how do you keep the Sabbath, let me give you a quick overview of what Jesus and the early church taught about the Sabbath. First, the Gospels affirm that Jesus practiced keeping the Sabbath but he did so with a different understanding than the religious leaders of his day. In Luke, we read that he went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read. See, Jesus made this his custom, his habit of observing at least one aspect of the Sabbath, and that was the need to gather together in worship with others as a part of the rhythm of his week. Jesus did stop for a day of rest, and to show reverence and worship. But if you spend any time studying the Gospels, you quickly find that Jesus had a very different understanding of the Sabbath than the religious leaders of his day. And he added another layer to the Sabbath. He added restoration. Mark writes, one Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields and his disciples, they were, walk, they were walking along and they began to pick up some heads of grain and some of the religious leaders, okay, some of the religious leaders saw this and they were outraged. They, they had created an entire code of conduct with like 39 categories of Sabbath work that were prohibited and these were things like carrying, burning, extinguishing, finishing, and so many more. So... After Jesus' disciples picked up some heads of grain to eat, some of the religious leaders saw this, and they said to him, the Pharisees said, look what they were doing. This is unlawful on the Sabbath. And Jesus answered, have you never read what David did when he was with his companions and they were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and, and ate and consecrated bread, which is lawful only for the priests to eat, and he also gave some to his command companions. And then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. You see, the religious leaders had become so focused on their restrictions that they lost sight that the Sabbath is meant to bring restoration for people. If people are hungry, they should be fed. If people are hurting, they should be cared for. 
In fact, there are seven times when Jesus heals people who are sick or hurting on the Sabbath day. In Matthew 12, Jesus healed a man with a hand deformity on the Sabbath. And the religious leaders in this day were once again outraged by this. So Jesus said to them, he said to them, if any of you have a sheep and it falls into the pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. The purpose of the Sabbath was good after all. We stop in the name of love. Loving and bringing restoration is surely part of what the Sabbath is about. And we point this out because I, we want you to realize, even though the religious leaders in Jesus' day twisted the Sabbath into cold religion, Jesus doesn't reject the Sabbath. Jesus restores the Sabbath. In fact, he transforms it. After Jesus finished the work, paying the price for our salvation on the cross, the Jewish Sabbath on Saturday looked like a dark day that could, could never be made right. But that first Easter Sunday, everything changed. And since that first Easter, you see something fascinating happens. The Sabbath moves. Jesus' followers felt the freedom to move the day from the last day of the week to the first day of the week, Sunday, when Jesus rose. That's why all over the New Testament, we read in Acts, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Or in Corinthians, Paul writes, on the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Or in Revelation, John writes, on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. All this to point out to the, to the reality that even for the followers of Jesus in the New Testament, there was one day each week set aside for rest and reverence and restoration. And this wasn't just cold, rigid rituals because of their religion. As a matter of fact, Paul warns the, Col the Col Colosseum Christians against keeping a legalistic Sabbath. He says, so do not let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come, and Christ himself is that reality. And when Paul writes, Christ himself is that reality, he is saying Jesus fulfills the Sabbath. The Sabbath is all about ceasing from our work and resting, and that's not just true in the physical sense, it's also true in the spiritual sense. Before Jesus' death and resurrection, humanity thought it depended on its own good works to get into heaven. It was all about being good enough. But now Jesus has fulfilled the law. His death and resurrection frees us from having to work to earn his favor and love. We can rest completely in his love for our righteousness. And as the writer of Hebrews puts it, for all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors just as God did after he created the world. So back to the final question, how can you say yes to Sabbath in 2022? Every week, choose one day, set it aside for rest, for reverence, and for restoration. First, take a day each week to rest. Take a day to stop and catch your breath, a day to not do, you, do your work. If your work is as a homemaker, it's a day for you to have a break from the grind of cooking and go to El Cholo. If, if, <laughs> if it's about cleaning and getting things done, you know, you can set that aside and let your house be a mess. If your work is as a student, it's a day for you to rest from the burdens of endless books and papers to write. Whatever your work is, thanks, Bill. I'll tell John you liked that part. Whatever your work is, stop it once a week and relax. Instead of working, do the things that will fuel your mind, fuel your body, your relationships, and your soul. Go for a walk, ride your bike. If you like to hike, you know, get on Turnbull Canyon. If you like to read, pick up a good book. If you like to garden, get down and get dirty. Barbara Brown Taylor writes, at least one day in every seven, pull off the road and park the car in the garage. Close the door to the tool shed and turn off the computer. Stay home, 
Not because you are sick, but because you are well. Talk to someone you love into being well with you. Take a nap, a walk, an hour for lunch. Test the premise that you are worth more than you can produce. That even if you spent one whole day of being good for nothing, you would still be precious in God's sight. And when you get anxious because you are convinced that this is not so, remember that your own conviction is not required. This is a commandment. Your worth has already been established. Even when you are not working, the purpose of the commandment is to woo you to the same truth. Amen. So take a day to rest, not out of rigid restriction of a legalistic obligation, but stop in the name of love and also make it a day of reverence. It's a day to gather together and worship God, to grow in his word. I know that for many of us, we got out of this rhythm during the pandemic. Let's get back. Albert Schweitzer once said, do not let Sunday be taken from you. If your soul has no Sunday, it has become an orphan. So Sabbath is a day to keep your soul in a family as you meet together with others following Jesus. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be Sunday, but we need a weekly rhythm where we observe a discipline of gathering for worship, praying together, giving reverence to God, reverence. Finally, make it a day for bringing restoration like Jesus did. It's a great day to welcome a hurting person, visit someone who's sick, feed someone who's hungry, or just spend time with someone who's lonely. Henry Ward Beecher wrote, a world without a Sabbath would be like a man without a smile, like a summer without flowers, like a homestead without a garden. It is the joyous day of the whole week. And you need to stand strong and secure in 2022. Close with the words of Hudson Taylor. Taylor writes, to every toiling, heavy-laden sinner, Jesus says, come to me and rest. But there are many toiling, heavy-laden believers too. For them, this same invitation is meant. Note well the words of Jesus. If you are heavy-laden with your service, and do not mistake it, he does not say, go labor on, as perhaps you imagine. On the contrary, he says to stop and turn back, come to me and rest. Never did Christ send a heavy laden one to work. Never, never did he send a hungry one, a weary one, a sick or sorrowing one away on any service. For such the Bible only says, and Jesus says to us today, come, come, come. And that's the invitation for all of us. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for the work, uh, for speaking into Pastor Riley's heart this last week, this, this, this message that we all needed to hear. And God, would you, um, as, we, as we hear it out loud today, would you just have it pierce our hearts in a way that, yeah, we use words like commandment and it can feel legalistic and but this commandment is all about stopping because you love us and you want us to realize that we're not defined by what we produce. We're not valued for what we can do. We're loved just because of who we are. And we thank you for that. Help us to rest well, to revere you in it, and being be people of restoration to the world around us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, sit tight. Sit tight. Because we're going to celebrate some baptisms. All right? Some of our elementary students went to camp a couple weeks ago, and some kids made decisions to follow Jesus. And this is Ronnie. Ronnie... How does, that, how does that water feel? But I, I heard a warning that maybe the heater wasn't all the way up. Maybe like 80 degrees? Negative, lower. Ronnie, we're so excited to get to celebrate uh, your commitment to following Jesus. You said that your favorite song is Raise a Hallelujah, is that right? 
That's a good song. I like singing that one too. Well, Ronnie, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Is it your desire to follow him for the rest of your life? Well, then as your friends and family here, it's our joy to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're feeling the baptism today. <laughs> yes, you are. And we also have Karina. I think he's also going to get baptized. Hello. <laughs> Karina, you said the, some of the favorite lyrics that we sing are Asi Eras 2. That's from Waymaker, right? That's so cool. I love singing that song in Spanish with, with our team as well. Well, Karina, have you accepted Jesus as your uh, personal Lord and Savior? Is it your desire to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Well, then it's our joy to baptize you in the name of the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, God bless you guys. Thanks for laboring through with me today, and go Rams.